The short game is listener supported on Patreon. If you'd like to support the show and join us on our Discord, head to theshortgame.net or patreon.com slash the short game. Welcome back to The Short Game, a show about short video games, games that respect your time. My name's Nate Heininger, and this week I am joined by two brilliant co-hosts. Aw, thank you. I'm Laura Nash. And I'm Shane Kelly. Well, we're going to talk about word games, so I thought I would try to, you know, bump us up a little bit, because I don't know about you all, but these games can make me feel very stupid sometimes, so I thought I would start by, you know, lifting us up before we... um, digress into madness uh so this week we are um kind of riding the wave a little bit of what's all over the internet um and it's something that i think all of us have actually been interested in a long time so we're using this as an excuse to talk about word games um specifically we're going to start with wordle which everyone is playing right now but um we want to talk more about word games just in general as well wordle rules but uh Word games are something I think that's a constant for a lot of us. We're, there's We started making an outline for this show, and we wound up with way more than we could possibly talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's basically just the fact that there there's a subcategory of short game, which is almost too short. The game <laughs> that you really can't do an episode on because it's literally just a spelling test. And uh, yeah, we're bringing them all to you in one big uh, jam-packed episode. And I think when I was working for a Game Club, I found some research that was like, almost everyone plays some kind of word game, but everyone equalizes to a word game that makes them feel challenged but smart. So there are games that are like way too hard for uh, normies, and there are games that are way too easy for you if you are, you know, really of a certain games. linguistic yeah. capability um so <laughs> i think but we found out like everyone plays it but everyone thinks that they play different games than everyone else unless you're on the internet this week and you're playing wordle because everybody's got those little black and green squares all over the place yeah that's a very brilliant uh little adaptation for the game and what i've read about uh, the game is that so the the game was created by um, some academic guy, I, I, I didn't catch the details, but the, the neat factoid I got in the Wordle explainer that came across my newsfeed was that um, he created the game and it got a little bit popular in certain circles. He found out that um, some group that was playing it in like Australia was using the color box emoji as a way of just like talking about the game amongst themselves he liked that, and then he built it into the game, and that's when the game went viral, which really goes to show you the um, the power of building some kind of uh, digital, social, cryptic bragging feature into your video. <laughs> that's visual, because if it was just, yes. I got today's Wordle in four guesses, it would be incredibly boring. Yes. Well, it, it is what I think drew me into the game, at least, is I kept seeing these, like, interesting green black and yellow patterns everywhere and i like word games so the name wordle is like well this seems like something i'd be interested in and then it's so simple and the amount of time you commit to it um you know is anywhere between three minutes to uh most of your morning uh which has been me off and on uh in multiple of these of these words um, and it, it's the perfect sort of, uh, it, it was seemingly built for going viral, even though that doesn't uh, sound like that was the case. The guy was just trying to make a cool game and, you know, here we are. A gift for his girlfriend. For his girlfriend. Yeah, that's another another neat little Honestly, story. I think that's one of the big tricks to it is one, it's a gift for his girlfriend, so there's not ads and monetization in it. It's just a cool game that doesn't want anything but for you to like it. And two, yeah. she went through all the words in his database and crossed off the ones she didn't know. So the answer will never be too obscure. <laughs> I'm looking at you, New York Times spelling bee. <laughs> you only can blame yourself when you don't he know the answer. He has turned down, you know, at this point, he could very easily flip a switch and make a ton of money off of it. 
Um, but he apparently has turned down offer after offer to, uh, you know, monetize, make an app. And now there's all these copycats and it, the game itself is, is in many ways a copycat of, you know, I don't, he did not invent this mechanic. He just invent, he just put together the perfect version of it that at, that led to this, um, sort of viral mayhem. Um, but I think it's cool that he, you know, he had a purpose for it and he's sticking with that, even though, uh, it is a, it has made him at least this week's internet celebrity. Although I did notice he, now there's a splash page that happens sometimes when you go to it, which is all about him and some links to his other things, which at least did not happen the first time I went there, but that's cool. Like, I think that's great. I hope that he parlays this into, you know, success. Um, even if he doesn't want to directly monetize the game. So if you are listening now and haven't seen these little boxes everywhere and clicked through and tried this, or if you're listening in three years when no one knows what Wordle is because it's no longer viral, uh, what of you two want to try to describe what this game is? Absolutely. So Wordle is a um, online word game. And part of what makes the design of it so nice, I think, and, and so shareable is that it is basically just a website. It's not an app or a game you're going to download. You can load it up. You could share a link to it to a friend, and they can start playing right away. And when you load the game, the first thing you see is you've got a keyboard and a grid that is, uh, what, five by six, is it? And yes. the um, there's a keyboard on screen, and it uses a custom keyboard. And the reason for that becomes obvious as soon as you enter your first word you have to type in a five letter word and it'll enter that into the first five boxes in the grid and then hopefully if you are lucky some of those boxes will change to yellow or green and at the same time so do the keys on the virtual keyboard so the the colors are indicating uh, one of two things. Well, really, there's three things because they can turn gray, yellow, or green. Uh, gray means you can scratch this letter off. It is not in the word you're trying to guess. Yellow means this letter is in the word, but you have it in the wrong place. And green means it's the right letter in the right place. And so basically, if you're familiar with the game um, Mastermind, you're kind of doing the same thing here. You are trying to guess the secret word by um, sheer guessing and process of elimination. And what kind of makes it a little extra tricky and a little bit of an extra challenge is that every single guess you make, unlike with Mastermind, where you're essentially inventing a pattern, here, every guess has to be a valid word in his dictionary, which is to me something like all of the five letter words in Scrabble, but it also sounds like he has eliminated all the words his girlfriend didn't know. Oh so. no, he the the answers will be words that are known, but you can guess any oh, words. Okay, you can guess sure. obscure words, but they likely aren't the right answer. Right. I don't know exactly what dictionary he's using for this, but uh, you know, I, I've not had it fail to uh, to recognize a word that I knew was real. Yeah, he started with 12,000 five-letter words, and there are 2,500 answers. So five years of answers. Once you do make your guess and you have uh, you have locked it in, it'll let you know. Uh, basically, it'll tell you if you've been on a streak, if you've been uh, – some of the stats at the end are kind of fun and interesting. It tells you, uh, you know, what the uh, – I don't remember what all the stats it shows you are. It tells you how many of these you've done in a row and uh, what the average guess is. But do most people get it in one, two, three, four, five, six? It shows you your win percentage. It shows you your winning streak. It shows you your history of how often have you gotten it right and what number. So um, it's remembering like you've gotten it right in three guesses four times you've gotten it right and four guesses six times so on and so forth um so you can kind of see like how often you're getting it and um, at least i've never gotten it in less than three but you can see how many you've gotten in three four five or six um uh, and then it gives you a easy uh copy button to copy your just how many guesses it took and then as we were talking before a delightful emoji uh, set 
that directly replicates the grid that you've now created with your guesses. So if it was, let's say your first guess was a total swing and a miss, uh, you will have a row of five black emoji uh, and then so on and so forth going down that you can copy and paste. And that's what everyone is doing online. Maybe too much, maybe excessively. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But um, it, it it's a really fun game. The only other thing I think that we haven't said yet is that there is one word a day. This is not a game that you go and play, you know, like most games that we all play. You're like, I like this. I'm going to play it in nonstop until I hate it. Um, this one is limited. You, you do your one word and then you wait the, uh, wait the day to see what the next word is. But that's also everybody's word, which is one of the best parts about it because everybody is playing the same one. The little squares and yellows and greens make sense to you once you've gotten it. You can then kind of look back at what your friends have shared and then like, be like, oh, I wonder what word that was. Or like, oh, I see like they got stuck on this or they didn't see yeah. that was a repeated letter. Like you you can almost make up a little story for your friend. Uh, Kat Manning and Bruno Diaz are weirdly doing like a competitive version where they, they know each other's starting words and are like making this a weird meta game on Twitter. <laughs> it's fascinating. We have a um, – I have a, a Slack with um, a bunch of my friends and we have a, now a channel on it. We're playing Wordle every day. And yeah, you almost start to like – meta game where it's like well i know what words they like to start with and i can see what letters you know are, have been blacked out i I don't know for sure but i can kind of guess i know what people like to i know what people like to do so i can have an idea and that gives you like a little bit of a leg up on on the first game but for the most part it's you know it's not really meant to be competitive um but it is fun to see like oh, I managed to get this one in three. Did anyone else get it in three? Or like someone getting it in two, which is crazy. And someday I'm just going to get lucky where my starting word lines up to be the actual word and I'm going to get it in one. Uh, and I, I dream of that day. That'll be the best day of my life. But um, And I've seen it on, on Twitter. My favorite thing I have seen on this game, um, a few days ago, I think maybe the first or second day that I played the game, um, I... I got the word, I solved it. The word was tiger, right? And then I was mm -hmm. on Twitter and I saw maybe my favorite tweet of all time that was a obscure reference. Um, someone posted their wordle for that day and it was one row, all green. They had guessed it perfectly on the first try. And yep. the reply was, yes, yes which was just a reference to the um, the classic poem, um, The Tiger, He Has Escaped His Cage. Yes, yes, <laughs> the tiger is out. And it was the starting word because they were a baseball fan of the Hayden yes! Tigers. So, like, it's, nice. it's meta on all the levels. Oh, it's like, it's got poetry, it's got baseball, it's just the internet. The internet is collapsing on itself. Perfectly meta. Um, we had one, uh, a couple, like, sometime in the last week or so, and uh, Molly had played it before me and she put in our, in our chat group, like, uh, this one was tough. It was a real bear. And I was like, is that a hint? And so I was like, one of my first guesses was, was like polar, you know? And it's like, no, it was not a hint at all. Uh, I just like way read into it into just her saying this was tough. Um, but uh, when, I got stuck <laughs> on the word. when I, when I share, so I, I, I shared uh, wordle in my work group chat. And by the way, Wordle is great for the work group chat because with only one five-letter puzzle a day, no one can accuse you of uh, slacking off and playing games all day. Mm -hmm. um, but the uh, uh, so when I posted it and shared it, um, one of my coworkers came back and uh, said, "Oh, I see the subtle hint that you gave uh, when you when you gave your uh, your clue there, Shane. I had not given a clue. <laughs> 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 there was no clue intended." But that's the that's the thing with the, the this game and any word game is you get so wrapped up in like what letters have been used, what's available, what are the possibilities, and I go through like these stages of like grief, you know, uh, Davida or whatever, where I'm like, 
I, I, I can't believe I don't know this, 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 this isn't even a word. There's no way this is a word. This game is stupid. It must, this must be something obscure. This must be something really ridiculous. Oh, I hate this. But it's like, no, I can get it. I can get it. And then you're like, damn it. It was tiger. How did I get so wrapped up in, in, in whatever like available letters that I had that I completely got blinded by the fact that it could be tiger or whatever. So, um, what are your guys' strategies for like tackling a, a game like this and not uh, losing your mind? I have a of a strategy that I love in games like this, and that is um, there is a um, there's a kind of a nonsense phrase uh, that you'll see in well, you'll see it all over the place. Uh, the origin of it is on the original. Um, kind of typesetting printing machines. They they weren't Q W E R T Y. Uh, they put the letters in order of their frequency, and so the uh, or old school typesetters would type out Etoane Sherdlu, which E T O A C E T A O I N S H R D L U, which is approximately the twelve most common. English letters uh, by order of their frequency, right? So that, if you can remember, uh, Etoen Sherdlu, then it will always help you with uh, letter guessing because E-T-A-O-I-N, those are more, much more likely than, you know, your uh, goth weirdo letters uh, that come at the end <laughs> of the alphabet, like X and Z. <laughs> I heard uh, recently, I learned all uh, stemming from this, wordle fad or phase that like so apparently when wheel of fortune first started um there you know how now they they start you out with r s t n e or whatever the, the starting five letters that they give you in wheel of fortune when they first started the show they did not give you any free letters um but everybody locked into guessing those letters first so much that the producers of the show were like this is boring that the first letters are always these. So they've said, all right, let's just give everyone those five letters and then start the game. Uh, and it like, you know, completely changed the strategy of the game, which I think is interesting and kind of what you're talking about here too, which is like, go for those common letters first. Right. And I know that, uh, the think pieces have gone out where people are like, well, that's true for the entire English alphabet, but what about five letter words? And they've like found with a piece of code that sewn a young eagle is the right word. Though that's boring. Like if you play with sewn, like fine, but like you need to like talk to your maker. Like you're, you have some psychotic <laughs> tendencies, so like guess a real word. Sorry. That's what I was. You can't ask. max min everything in your life. Do you start? Do you guys start with the same letter or same word every time? I start with um, either. Laura has completely I, called me out because I it's soar s o a r e that's a young eagle, and I I thank do you. I do use that starting word. So thank and you. That's very okay. Much. Um, you can do you know do what you need to, but like. That's like I don't like using like Scrabble words to solve uh -huh. it. So I usually like, I like using the pair teary and pious because there's no words together. All vowels are taken, and it gets the Y and the S at the last letter, which I feel like is a good strategic thing to do. Good call. So I alternate teary or pious depending on how I'm feeling. Yeah, I um, I for a while was using raise as my first one. R A I S E. Um, which I thought was a pretty good starting word, but I, I kind of embrace the chaos that you're talking about, Laura. And now I do uh, a different starting word every day. Um, I still try to be like strategic about it and use words that have, you know, those letters that we, that we're talking about right now. But I think it's more fun to just start from something completely different every day and just see if I can get it. Um, so far, I haven't missed a day, but I've definitely had, my share of, you know, six guest number six being like, Oh shit, <laughs> I think it's this. And then, you know, getting it. But, um, I, I, I've really enjoyed just going for it without trying to min max it. Like you were saying every time. But the one time I really like was completely thrown was the, the, the day it was query was the answer. Yeah. Um, oh, that because I me. got, 
because with my my guesses, I somehow I got I knew the Y was the last letter, and I knew the E and the U were in reverse order. And it, I sat there. I was like, there is O and I and the R because I I think I had put Teary in, <laughs> and then I put in Pious, and I knew the U was in the wrong place. So I was like. The U has to come before the E, and it has to have an R and a Y. There can only be one word. But, like, I, I just sat there moving with, you know, picture putting Teary and Pius in, and then, like, <laughs> I, I knew I had to get it in three. I was like, there's only one word in the entire English language that fits this. <laughs> but it's going to take me a long time to find it. <laughs> that one took me all the way through to the end, and yeah. it was I, – I got right down to the very bottom – uh, without getting Q or U, and I was like, "This cannot be a word. There is no word." And Q again, I had U E R Y, but in all the wrong order. Ooh. And I was like, "Yeah, there's no other word. I just have to anagram this and put another letter in." And it took me way longer than it should have, guys. <laughs> that's well, yeah. Well, and that's what these games do to you, though, and that's why I think part of what is the appealing element of them is that you do get in these like head spaces where you're like, this doesn't exist. And then when you get it, it's like, hell yeah, finally, I, you know, oh, I, I nailed it. You know, like the one today, um, which, well, like it's, it's Abby. Oh shit. Wait, you guys haven't played. Have you? I have. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> finished it for today. Thanks for the hint. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, I like. Yeah. Literally- so today my, my wordle and uh, yeah, th- thanks for that. Um, <laughs> Today, my word, my guess uh, at the start was Abel's, A B L E S, right? So I had A, Ooh. B, and E in the first guess. And oh, then my man, second table. guess was uh, I was like, okay, I got to hit more letters. I can't think of A, B. You know what really gets me is duplicated letters because mm-hmm. it, it when, really when messes it messes with you. Yeah, you know, like, okay, I've got A, B, and E. Those are covered. What other letters can I use, right? So um, when Wordle picks something that has a double letter in it um, or the same letter twice spaced apart, you know, it, that's, it's just nuts. Like I've, I'm like, okay, I've mentally crossed off the B, so I'm not going to put in a second B. I've been racking my brain literally all day to try and come up with my third guess. <laughs> well, I'm so sorry that I, uh, that yeah. I spoiled it for you. But I, I brought that one up to say that, like, when I finally hit it, because I, I got all the way down to my sixth guess. When I finally got it, like, I literally, like, gasped out loud. I was like, oh, Abby. <laughs> you know, like. This was a, <laughs> this was a victory for Teary, because I knew the Y was in the right place, and the E and the A were in the wrong order. And I just kept yeah. being like, what is a word where the A comes before an E? Yeah. And it ends in Y. And I sat there, like, I literally didn't look at it for another six hours and eventually guessed Allie. Yeah. And that was wrong. And I was like, how is Allie wrong? <laughs> Mo- Molly had Molly had the exact same. I had, I didn't even think about Allie, which I got lucky on. No, I, I, I used the word large earlier. And so I, I knew mm. the L was gone. Um, but this this reminds me of, um, you know, Shane, what you're talking about, uh, where you like mentally cross letters off of your list. Um, there we I, this is a, a thing that happened like 10 years ago and has still entered into like the lexicon of me and, and my group of friends. We were playing Wheel of Fortune and we were playing it on like an iPad and we had like six of us. For whatever reason, this is what we were doing that night. We were all sitting around playing Wheel of Fortune on an iPad and we had the word in front of us. Cool. That was uh, <laughs> it was. S Q U blank D and then new word C blank R. Okay. And we knew the last word had to be car because it's C blank R. And so we're sitting there. What is the first word? S Q U blank D. What could this possibly be? We know it's car and it's squa, you know, S Q U blank D something. And for whatever reason, because the A we knew was going to go in car, we completely, like six of us, completely thought there's no way that it could be the A. We just, I don't know. No one even brought it up. 
There's this only vowel, one A. Guys. This vowel can yeah. only be used once. It can only be used once, <laughs> which is not the rules, you know, but for some reason that had happened. And the, the thing that we landed on was squid car. And we're like, mm. we're like, everyone's like, that's not a word. That's not a thing. There's no such thing as a squid car. But we're like, there's nothing else it could be. It's gotta be oh, squid. Oh. It's, gotta, it's gotta be squid car. So we finally get, we literally guessed squid car, which was our last <laughs> guess that we could do. And when the word popped up, when it popped up squad car, the silence in the room, like, was the dumbest I've ever felt in my entire the life. Sea, have, like I the seafood you, equivalent of the Wienermobile. <laughs> the squid have I told you of our worst partial solve as a puzzle team at the Halloween no, uh, puzzle no. hunt in Seattle? Uh, everybody on the team was hungover. We actually had someone on the way to the event throw up in a uh, bathroom at a grocery store while trying to get snacks cool. to sober up. So we were in great shape. We've been trying to solve a puzzle. It, not going well. We had a bunch of letters. It was, you know, Halloween. It was at a haunted house, but in the day. So we're solving it and solving it and solving it. And we have like 50% of the letters done. And someone in the group is like, oh, yeah, I got it. And he runs up to the person and says it. And the person looks ashen and stricken and horrified and just goes, no, <laughs> that's 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 not no. And. And he sends it back, and we're like, "What? What did you guess?" And he was like, "Corpse rape." <laughs> we're like, "The answer is sour grapes." <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "Well, we're it's a Halloween theme," and we're like, "You just guessed corpse rape?" Corpse rape. No, not <laughs> that. The anagram just came out wrong, and we didn't have all the letters. And he just um, completely happily. Oh man, anagrams. Like, um, we still believing he had it. We still all we still say all the time squid car. Um, so hopefully you and your friends aren't saying corpse rape a lot. Oh, we and do, also, unfortunately. Uh, quick, quick shout out to the person who just sent us some really nice feedback, saying that they love the show because they can play it with their family and kids around. I'm so and, sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, a family friendly. Hilarious. He's like, that's a word game podcast. It must be safe. I'm yeah, so sorry. Um, but that that's what these games do to you. You go... The, your brain just gotta, turns off. Yeah, it's got to be Squid Car. There's literally nothing else it could be than Squid Car or Corpse Rape. And, and then these are the right answers. When, <laughs> the letters only make sense in one configuration, what else, and what that's else the way it, it is. It's got to be Squid Car. Uh, funnily Sound enough, like, uh, like six months ago, um, I was with the same group of people, and a Jeep uh, was parked out in front of the place we were at, and it had a... Like a, it was a white Jeep with a black, um, like Kraken painted across the whole thing. And we were like, there it is. There's the squid car. We're not <laughs> wrong. Squid car does exist. So, um, squid and everything car came back. Yeah. Squid car forever. Um, so anyway, huge tangent, but like, I, I, that story just makes me think of the power of word games and how, stupid That's and dumb and and fun they can be uh when you get wrapped when you get yourself wrapped around in a circle um so we've kind of already talked about it but um you know i think a big part about this game is how viral it went and how quickly it went and how it's like taken over the internet um you know we've talked about the the quick emoji thing um and uh anything else that you can think of like you know what led to this game going viral so quickly I have I have a big thought on that. I, I I mean, we've talked about the fact that it builds in a social sharing feature, but mm -hmm. really I think the biggest thing that makes it possible for something like this to go viral is the accessibility. The uh the the U the user experience on this game is just really, really clean and good. It's very, very easy to send someone a link and they will start playing. The game explains itself in one screen, and then the entire game is right there in front of them. The concept of the game is simple enough that you can explain it in, um, well, I guess we've been explaining it and recording now for about uh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, but... Uh, but most of that was not gameplay. <laughs> that's true. It's <laughs> so. quick to explain. So the... Um, the I, I think the biggest part of it is really the fact that it doesn't require 
a download or an account. Like yeah. the fact that you can send a link to somebody and they can start playing and then they can share it with their friends all without any friction of them needing to enter any information other than a word guess. That is absolutely perfect. And I think more games that want to go viral should learn from that. And more games you can share without spoiling. Good point. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that that's absolutely right, Jane. It is so accessible and it's fun. And five letter words are challenging, but not um, inaccessible. You know, um, there's a there's a lot of uh, you know this went popular so fast that of course now there's a ton of like ripoffs and knockoffs and copies and and Wordle itself is is a copy of a copy of a copy and and so there's all these new versions of these games and um there's one one of my favorite it's actually developed by a friend of a friend uh it is called Queerdle um and it basically is the same game but it the answers are always um let's see if I can get the um uh, how they family friendly how they, it's yeah. Well, I've I heard some of these answers. <laughs> before. Oh my god! The yeah. tagline is the yassification of Wordle. <laughs> That's what I wanted. Yeah, the yassification of Wordle. So the, you know, the one of the we one of the words was daddies. You know, stuff like that. Um, it's a ton of fun, and and go check it out. It, it's it's hilarious. But um, one of the things that it's different is that it does words that are uh, five letters. It'll do six letters, and it'll do seven letters. And when it does those seven letter words, it's a whole new ball game. It just feels significantly more challenging. Um, and so I think that that like five letter word is the right degree of challenge for everyone to get involved. If it was any more than that, I think a lot of people would bounce off of it because it's it's way harder. Uh, the, it's kind of brilliant because I mean, back to the accessibility there. Uh, five by six at scales pretty perfectly to be great on a mobile phone. So this really feels like a mobile native game, even though it is essentially a website, right? You're you're getting a link and you're opening it in your browser, no downloads or anything like that. But once you're in it, it feels like essentially like a mobile native kind of game. Fits yeah. your screen perfectly and all. Yeah, it feels like a, a good web app. Um, the, uh, the other one that I love, and this is just, it's, Weirdle is actually a game and it's challenging just like Wordle, but uh literal where you just have to guess the letter of the day and you have a uh the full alphabet in front of you and you just have to guess what that day's letter is, uh, which is hilarious because you're just just tapping letters till you get it right and how quickly can you get it right. Uh but uh, uh, you know, anytime there's something that go- gets this popular, it's always funny to see the um, the immediate like knockoffs and and, and uh, additions to the to the genre. Um, feels like Wordle is gonna stick around for a while, though. At least the the format. Um, any other any other thoughts on on Wordle? I actually can't believe that we just talked for as long as we did about it. We've got other things that we wanted to talk about, but before we move on, other thoughts? Nah, Wordle's good. Yeah, check it out. Um, let's talk about some of our other uh, favorite word games. We're going to try to split this up. Um, we've all been big word game fans for a long time. So I think we each have a couple word games that we've enjoyed over the years that we wanted to talk about. We'll go a little round robin on that. And then we're going to try to talk about uh, any word games that maybe don't hit the mark. Like why are some of these word games so fun and so addictive and then why does some of these word games you're just like f this i'm putting it down i hate it um so let's start with fun ones though uh laura why don't we start with you so i really like a tiny efficient word game called seven little words the the digit seven not the spelled out word uh if you're googling uh there's a ton of ripoffs of this uh there is a web version with the daily puzzle but the this is a puzzle where at the top they have a list of, of definitions like unshod eight letters, old English sheepdog quality eight letters. That's from today's. Um, and at the bottom they have a bunch of little syllables like shoe, I-L-D-I-N. It's just like groups of letters. And what you're doing is you're trying to spell all of the words at the top with the limited set of letters at the bottom. 
like, but they have to get stuck together. So you might mm. click four or five parts of words, put it together to spell one of them. Sometimes you'll know the word right away. Sometimes you're trying to guess. And often it is like you're putting three letters together and you're like, this can never be a word. And then someone else, like you just rotate them and you're like, oh yeah, that's the most common word in the, in the planet. <laughs> um, there's no time limit. It's just seven words, seven clues. You can find them in any order. There's no penalty. You know, um, if it's deep fried treats is the example they give. You do D-O-N-U-T-S. So you click three little sections, you make a word. Um, what makes this really fun, this was our go-to like writing a subway or like something where you don't know how long you're going to be in transit. <laughs> like this is a really yeah. good one because it will fill a ticking container. None of the actual puzzles last longer than like – four or five minutes you can do 20 in a row or you can do two and you still feel satisfied so it's the simplest uh word game that i've consistently played some little words is just Mwah. nice yeah that sounds great uh, it, it does sound like super uh super good time uh, i'm not sure whether to talk about code names or puzzle juice pork and dust go Why for not it both? the i think easiest recommendation when it comes to word games and to an extent, also party games um, is code names, and code names is a really, really great uh, card game. Came out about five, six years ago. Um, this is a game where you have to have a fairly large group, like four plus people, because you need two teams, and at least one person on each team has to be a spy master. And the kind of theming on the game is it's a word guessing game where the spy master is giving clues that um, have to obliquely point to a word that is on the board, which is made up of a, a bunch of kind of words that have been kind of flipped um, from these cards. So you lay out a bunch of cards in a grid and the two teams um, try to guess their team's words while avoiding giving away their words to the other team. So... Um, the, the guessing element, I really like word games that have that kind of guessing element and that kind of, um, uh, psychological strategic element. This works really well with a large group and there's even some nice ways to play it online. Um, uh, it's a absolutely great game. Um, I've played it with friends, family, coworkers. It's always a hit. And uh, I if have you want played something... code names. Yeah, I've yeah? played code names. What do you think about it? Uh, multiple times. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. It's it's stupid and silly and and a ton of fun. Um, stupid in like stupid in a good way where you're like you know it's it's ridiculous and everyone is uh, having a great time. So um, I'm 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 a big fan. My one quibble is it can have some dead time. So like I think it's best when like you're like a you can get up and get chips or something because like not everybody. It's always active, but mm -hmm. I will say I really praise it because it's arguably better when things don't go well. Right. I think this is the source of me like cluing. Um, I said like Bond in like a James Bond way. And one of my friends was like, well, clearly Laura is referring to chemical bonds, which means like electromagnetic. And I was like, <laughs> what the hell? Like, he, I, I never. I, She's like, she knows I'm a scientist, so this must be the answer. Uh, yes, Laura, I am talking about your husband, and I still think he's dumb for thinking that. Um, <laughs> when the answer, when whiskey was one of the, or like, like martini was one of the things, or like, yeah. it was such an obvious James Bond reference. Um, and he thought it was like electromagnetic something. That's it's another awful. thing I love about the game is it works better the better you know the people a you're person playing individually. With. Yeah. Um, remind me when we're not talking about like the best and the worst to tell me about, to tell you about the, the weirdest guessing game that I play. This is a game that as far as I can tell is exclusive to just me and my wife. Uh, and only when we are on long car trips. And do it like, now. All right. Just so, get into um, it now. Yeah, sure. I'll just do it now. Um, so we just call this the guessing game. Um, and the idea is, uh, it's a very, I, I basically never have to explain the guessing game to anyone. So it's gonna, this might be one of the first times I've had to explain the guessing game. Um, so I, I would have uh, you, uh, you would uh, 
So I, I would I would come up with a word or a phrase or a noun or um, it, literally anything in the universe, right? Um, and uh, then uh, you would just I would give you no clues, um, and then you would just start guessing, right? Yeah, and um, the the person who is uh, who has come up with the thing, the the, the non guesser. Um, responds by either saying um, that uh, your guess is the closest thing you've ever guessed so far, based entirely on just um, any arbitrary definition of, of how close two abstract concepts can be. Um, or I would say uh, a way in which the thing that you have said is like the thing that... Uh, that I am thinking of. Right. So, um, so I would say something like, um, you know, your, I, I might be thinking of the statue of Liberty. Um, and you might say something like, um, Harry Potter. And I would, I would say, well, um, the, that's so maybe if Harry Potter is the first guess, then it's the closest thing you've guessed so far. And then the second time, maybe you guess <laughs> not um, helpful. Then, <laughs> yeah, TV and the first guess is never ever helpful because it's always the closest yeah. guess. And then mm-hmm. the second guess, um, you might say TV antennas. Uh, and then I would say, well, it's more like Harry Potter than it's like TV antennas, uh, but like a TV antenna, um, it's metallic. Uh, yeah, or like it's taller than it's wide, or something. Right, yeah. something. Any and and the the part of the goal of this game is to give um, lots of very obscure hints and to really make um, your fellow player drag it out of you until they have lots and lots of uh, red herring garbage clues. Um, and that's the fun of it. it. This is a game that is we literally only play um, all on long road trips, uh, especially when uh, we're in cell phone dead zones. <laughs> this You must be so good at code names with Julia, though, because you know all the associations with a word. Like, you've practiced yes. that skill. That is exactly what it is. And and that um, the, that is why once you have played this game with the same person, practically every time you get into a, a car for more than an hour for, like, a 10-year relationship... Uh, you start having those moments where you're like, um, is it, uh, is it Iron Man? And you're like, yes, it was Iron Man, right? They, <laughs> like, guess it in one or two, um, which really makes you feel like you're psychic, uh, and it's kind yeah. of hilarious. I was going to suggest that we play a game around of it right now on the show, but um, I think it might just drive all of us insane. Um, even though maybe we finish not... the episode, we play around release to the Patreons, and it's either we'll... going to be a minute or thirty five, <laughs> and I'm going to go to bed right. in the middle of it. That's what we'll do. We'll uh, we'll do a round <laughs> uh, for the Patreon after this. <laughs> sure, the the guessing game just for the Patreon, just for the patrons. Yep. Um, okay. but yeah, I, I, I was also going to talk about puzzle juice. I'll keep it super short on puzzle juice. Um, this is a strong recommendation. Uh, puzzle juice was made by, uh, it was the very first game by Asher Vollmer who did, uh, who later went on to make one of my favorite games of all time threes. Um, puzzle ga- puzzle juice was kind of an early iOS puzzle game and, um, has been revived by the fabulous game club. Uh, so you you can still get it on the App Store. It was gone. Disclosure: for a while. I do not work for them anymore, but she I did no when they released Puzzle Lover. <laughs> uh, yes. But I still recommend Game Club. Um, and Puzzle Juice is basically Tetris, but when the blocks fall and 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 stack up, they turn into letter tiles, and so you're literally playing two simultaneous games at once. Um, you're playing Tetris, but then the blocks do not disappear until you use them to make words. So it is extremely difficult, um, and, uh, really wild and weird. Uh, but I love Tetris and I love, uh, sort of Scrabble adjacent games, uh, with a few exceptions. And so, um, <laughs> the, uh, the puzzle juice game is a good one. It's a good one to check out. You will know within your first few rounds of it, whether you love it or hate it. It's yeah. very 
one or the other. There was no in between when we were doing research on it. <laughs> well, I guess I'll talk about mine. And 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 like code names, um, you know, there's a lot of modern, um, really interesting games that utilize uh, that are they're fo- focused around words and, and word deduction and selection and whatnot. But I'm going to go throw back um, to the game that I have actually probably the word game that I probably played the most, uh, which is an old board game that for whatever reason I played a ton of when I was a teenager. This game is called Upwards. Uh, it, it's super. <laughs> Shane is shaking his head that he does not like it. And I can't. I'm gonna. He's gonna have his chance to speak, but um, I can't imagine anyone having any sort of opinion about this game at all, let alone a negative opinion. But um, it's super simple. You know the rules of Scrabble. Well, imagine with Scrabble, but instead of just going flat on the board, you can also stack letters up. So simple example. You have the word car out on the board. What you could do is take a B and put that B on, on top of the C and then use that B in another word. So you turn car into bar, and you get all the points from bar, and then you could maybe do bread, you know, down from that, right? And so anyone can basically stack letters on top of letters as long as it maintains or it creates a new word. And if you create those new words, you can get more points. And so it adds this third dimension to Scrabble, of not only being able to do build off of existing words on um, you know on the flat level, but you can also go up and just completely change the words that people made, and you end up with these crazy little towers of tiles. And and over time, a word you know you might have changed the first letter, which then opens the door to change the second letter into something different that makes a totally different word. You're just constantly changing the board, and it's um, I haven't played it in like 15 years, but I loved it whenever I played it a lot in person. And I just thought it was an interesting uh, take on Scrabble and and in some ways more challenging or at least more, um, you know, a more diverse array of of options than than Scrabble. Uh, So if you're looking for an old school board game, uh, word board game, I'd check out Upwards. Some reason Shane doesn't like it. So Shane, uh, what's going on here? What's your problem with Upwards? Uh, well, I, I have two major complaints with Upwards. The first is, uh, when you have a classic game like Scrabble, um, and you want to just do a ripoff of it, I feel like that should not be allowed. And, uh, second, (laughs) in, in Upwards, one of their big innovations is that all the letters are, have the same point value, which is absurd. Ooh, no. (laughs) I don't even remember the point scoring, so that it, I just you know, assumed that, you took a normal Scrabble set that and you might just played be fake upwards news, on it. I don't remember. No, that, but um. <laughs> upwards has their its own. I uh, one one um uh, uh I'll give some some faint praise to upwards for the uh, stackable tiles, uh, which actually you know what? Never mind. I'm taking all the points back. The <laughs> the uh, Scrabble tiles have the fabulous tactility of a wooden square. Upwards are like a, um, like crappy Duplo blocks uh, <laughs> that you stack in little, uh, they're like like little tiny square plates uh, that stack on top of each other. So, Do they have uh, the little hooks to like, Make them stick to each other at least. Uh, they're kind of. Um, it's, like a, it's like a little cap that, like, is, oh, okay. You know, it's like a smaller square on a bigger square that lot sits on top of the other one. Um, yeah, it's a little finicky, but uh, you know, it's still fun. <laughs> Shane, I hear your points, but I disregard them. Uh, it's a it's a fun game, so uh, check it out. So. Upwards and people who are really good at Scrabble have this thing in common, which is like once you get to the point where you're memorizing two-letter word lists and like words that are not in the common usage, I understand that makes you better at the game than me, but I also – like I am a casual player. So I think Upwards and Scrabble have the like – once you're – to be really good at it, you got to do memorization. 
And I think that's also the case of like why I am mad at the New York Times spelling bee, which is a really cute idea for a game. It's a little um, little beehive. It's a little beehive. And they've got a central letter that has to be in every word. And then the little hexagon is around the edge. And it's you have to come up with the um, – you get queen bee if you get every word possible. I think that's more than four letters. It's been a while since I played with all of the letters around it. Super fun, very addictive. But the people who are, like, playing and getting queen bee are, like, spending their life in this game. And they're also getting very obscure words. So, like, every word is on the table. Um, which means I can routinely get in the like first, second or third tier, but like, it takes a really long time to get to the queen bee. And you really, I think have to have like, you need to be an editor. Uh, you need like the people who, the people I see playing spelling bee are almost all on book Twitter and they're the writers or the editors. They're not the readers. (laughs) So (laughs) like I I have comfortably let spelling bee sail, but like, that's why I prefer Wordle. Like maybe I just am a basic person who needs stuff that's easier to win. But you know, I need to win stuff. <laughs> I have played Scrabble with someone who is like that, who has like min maxed Scrabble, and it's you're not even playing the same game with that person. I'm like you're not, oh, and you're, it's like playing that. poker with someone who like hasn't played enough poker to know like when they should bet or not. Like you know, I'm giving them a bad experience playing with them too, right? It's, like, it's a totally different game for people who are like big time into Scrabble and they're like, you know, putting down one or two letters, but because of how it perfectly lines up with all these stupid two letter or three letter words where like, you don't even know what any of the words mean. And you're like, and I'm like, I spell bottle, <laughs> you know? I mean, like, I respect the different. hell out of it. Sure. Yeah, but of course, you know, it's, it, it's like, thing, you know, but it, yeah. But it's a different game, right? And yeah, yeah. And that's not my approach to it. This so. is why I have I have mostly um, quit uh, Scrabble in certain contexts, uh, and the the first one is Words with Friends. When that was brand new, I was into it. I played yeah, a fair amount of it, but um, playing online Scrabble against nobody is about the worst way to play Scrabble. Um, You don't Mm -hmm. know if you're up against the two-letter word memorizer or, like, somebody's grandma, and then all of a sudden, uh, regardless of whoever it is, they're blowing up your phone saying, hey, I took my move, and then they make you wait for 20 minutes while they take their move. Not cool. Um, And I've also eliminated uh, Scrabble with relatives from my repertoire. That's more about my family, um, (laughs) the, the Kellys themselves. But, um, you know, I think Scrabble is a game that is best played by uh, friendly equals. Now, that's about it. That's my opinion on Scrabble's play Scrabble selectively. Never get in a Scrabble fight with a Kelly. Everyone knows that. Yeah, You lose and everyone's like, I thought you were smart. Or you win and everyone's like, well, of course you won. So like, there's no winning with people who aren't about the same level as you. Yeah. Well, there's a segment we like to do on this show, uh, as soon as we have completely and thoroughly completed um, the encyclopedic discussion of our topic. And (laughs) I think we've reached that point. That segment is a segment we like to call What's Making Us Happy This Week? And I would love to go first. Um, I was kind of reminded of this because I I brought up Puzzle Juice. The... uh, the creator of Puzzle Juice is a guy named Asher Vollmer, who, like I said, went on to make um, a lot of games. Uh, he he made Threes, which is fabulous. Um, he's made some other games like that we've covered on the show, uh, like Guildlings. Asher Vollmer is now part of a group called Vodio Games um, that has made a really, really, really great game. Game. And first off, Vodio Games, um, one just cool aspect of them, they're a unionized uh, game developer, which I think is pretty rare, uh, practically unheard yeah. of. Very cool. Uh, but the, their first big game here is called Beast Breaker. And um, I love cool, modern takes on gaming classics. And this is very much that. This is taking... Uh, your kind of classic block breaker games and turning it into 
an RPG that's also kind of like a weirdly, weirdly like a resource management slash uh, fighting game. In this game, you play as a little mouse. It is a turn-based mouse bouncing RPG. Uh, you're a <laughs> tiny mouse warrior um, who is kind of defending um, these little animal settlements from these gigantic crystalline beasts that are going to trample everything. And the game uses the uh, kind of uh, bouncy pinball style, um, maybe like um, brick breaker kind of physics. Um, and you, the RPG element is you're equipping them with all sorts of different uh, weapons and the weapons make you move and, and act in different ways. And you have different um, moves and the moves are things like, well, a move that will uh, let you bounce multiple times and move really far or one that bounces you shorter but uh, does more damage to the beast. The beast has like weak points. It gets pretty um, tactical. There's actually tons of tactics built into this game, which is kind of odd for something that's basically pinball with a mouse. Um, and the story is really cool so far, too. I'm not that far into it. Um, but I've unlocked, I think all of the kind of main characters and a lot of the weapons and there's a ton of variety. I'm really, really enjoying it. It's, um, it's also just a very cool looking game. The character designs are great. You know, the, the mouse <laughs> is absolutely adorable. Uh, there's a really fabulous hedgehog and, and, uh, cockatoo buddy, uh, and uh, a, a grandma mouse and the giant beasts are really cool. Uh, like they're these like uh, polygonal monsters. Like one of the first ones you fight is like a, a giant cat. Um, and uh, they they're kind of stationary. But when you so you're using up actions to make your little bouncy attacks um, and it'll show you like what area the monster is going to attack in and you're seeing what's basically like a tile mosaic picture of this beast. And there's certain weak points that you know you have to hit. It's cores or whatever. And um, when your turn is up, you've used up your actions. Then the beast kind of moves and like goes from position to position and does these cool attacks. Um, it is uh, it is both um, like refreshingly simple and like weirdly complex. And I'm I'm really loving it. That's uh, that is such a um, that's really what you want that type of strategy game to be described as like simple to learn but complex to master. I I, I have been wanting this game has been on my list to pick up for a while now because it looks so great and right up my alley and I'm glad to hear you're enjoying it. I, I need to give it a shot. Oh, I completely awesome. forgot. There's a whole like um, map exploration strategy layer where you're like hunting down the monster while simultaneously gathering resources to craft items that you're going to use in the fight. It's like, there's like layers and layers and layers to this thing. Um, and Which I think is why we didn't cover it for the show is because we were like, wait, this pinball peggle thing is actually peggle. super long. Yeah. It's, it's kind of, it's kind of a thing, but it's, um, I mean, repetitive isn't really the word because there's a ton of variety to it, but it is uh, simple enough that it makes for a really good, like, handheld chill-out game. Mm. Um, and it has the kind of uh, cozy, uh, kind of relaxed vibes that, uh, you know, we've been talking about as kind of a, a, a trend in the industry. Like, you know, if you're talking about a, a game about cute little fuzzy animals, uh, you know, you kind of have that. But it also has a little bit of edge to it. There's there's uh, <laughs> the RPG elements. There's like a there's a, a a dark past to some of these these characters and stuff like that. So I, I got to say, uh, I hope we do get a chance to cover it. I, I would love for us to make time for it in the schedule. Um, it's probably a little big for the show, but uh, yeah, I don't know. We've we'll see how you before. guys think about it. <laughs> what are you playing it on? On the Switch. Sounds great. Yeah, it, right now it's out on uh, Switch and the Epic Game Store. Nice. Um, Laura, how about yourself? So this has been an exceptional year for musicals. Like, the, there's more than one musical movie I liked this year, which is astonishing to me. But I'm not going to, unfortunately, talk about something everyone can see. Although, like, just go watch Tick, Tick, Boom. That's 
just, just do it. Um, but I'm going to talk about. Um, I saw my. Uh, I had my first cry on Broadway. Was wonderful. Yes, Ticker Boom was wonderful. I had my first cry on Broadway. Um, this is not the first show I've seen since the pandemic. Uh, restrictions lifted enough to go see shows. This is my like sixth in New York, and I saw another four in London. So um, clearly, I'm I'm vaccinated. I'm safe, um, <laughs> as safe as she can be. But um, I won a lottery ticket to see Moulin Rouge, and I did not think I was going to enjoy this. And then I had the best time. Um, I went alone because my husband decided to opt out uh, <laughs> because he was like, Judith Glock's musical of Moulin Rouge. There's no way I'm going to like it. But I walked in. It had the most glorious set. It went like the the whole stage had lights. There was the whole – like did wallpaper on the doors. They had sconces and like the chandeliers dimmed. But the thing that was most exciting to me was that they um, – it is the quintessential jukebox musical in that they put – like every song is actually a mashup of like 10 songs. And I think what surprised me was from the movie, they've taken a lot of the songs that are no longer popular and replaced them with like current jams. So like oh, there's Lady cool. Gaga and Rihanna and like Pink and all this stuff. And so like your nostalgia is now in it. So there's the Good Milan Rouge song. So um, if you're at home, it's going to tour soon. But I'll also say that the soundtrack has been really fun. If you want no surprises, if you want to like laugh out loud at the mixes, the thing that I found absolutely astonishing, um, I, I also cry only at the dumb stuff right now. I'm realizing like I cried not because the show was sad. I cried when the Kid Can Girls came out because I was like a big dumb show. <laughs> <laughs> I like burst into tears and cried at my mask and it was embarrassing. Um, but I'm really astonished that – you can laugh at the song changing when it's supposed to be funny, but off like, but then a girl will sing Firework by Katy Perry and you'll be like, this is really moving. <laughs> <laughs> They've like somehow arranged this, that this is moving and I'm okay yeah. with it. So um, if you liked the movie at all, it's very much got that energy of like, let's just throw everything at the wall. Let's just be excessive to the point that it comes back around and starts working. And I was – kind of expecting it to be a cash grab, even though I love the choreographer. I thought I knew the leads were like both people I really enjoyed. So um, a very surprising endorsement. By the end, I was like, this rules. Like, why am I, I like, yeah. I brought like drag brunch energy back home uh, <laughs> at like 11 o'clock. My husband had been home reading Wheel of Time by himself all night and was like, he, had Total so, he was all cozed vibe. up. On the couch with his book. He was like, hey, how's the show? And I was just like, feelings. <laughs> Poor guy. So funny. But um, it's a party. I endorse the soundtrack if you want party soundtrack. Nice. For your living room. Well, I also saw a show. Now, this was um, a little while ago, but I've been wanting to talk about it on the podcast. And we haven't done this segment for a while. But um, And I've actually talked about them uh, before on this show, but it's been several years. Um, so I saw a band called Bit Brigade. Um, and what they do is they have a uh, – uh, and I think there's other bands that do this, but this is the one I've seen a handful of times. Um, and what they do is they have a projector on screen or on stage and they have a someone sitting on stage speed running a video game a classic video game and all of the lights are just on this person and on the projector and the rest of the band is basically in darkness and they do speed metal covers of the of the actual music for that video game like down to the individual stages or levels or 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 whatever, and they'll even do like speed metal versions of the sound effects, you know. And uh, what I saw them beat uh, this time was The Legend of Zelda, the original. Uh, we watched someone speed run it in about 35 minutes. And uh, meanwhile, a speed metal band played all of the music for it. And it is the perfect show. You're, you get the uh the you know zelda music is classic and hearing it in speed metal is fantastic i think even if you don't like that style i'm not a big speed metal guy or anything like that i don't think i've ever like purposefully went to listen to speed metal but like 
speed metal video game music hell yeah all i'm on board all day and just even though they're mostly in darkness like just the technical skill it takes to play that sort of stuff is, is amazing so you've got this band that are like peak performers and there's someone on stage sitting and playing uh legend of zelda and speed running it which is all full of all the little gimmicks all the little weird stuff like we all are big fans of you know summer games done quick or well right now a game done quick is going on right and it's just like fun to watch that and this time you're actually seeing it in person um so i've seen them several times they did legend of zelda i've seen them beat ducktales um that one of the old batman games castlevania and all the while the band is playing uh and but uh the thing that's like the most fun about it is that uh because it's a it's a show it's a concert you know everyone's there they're all hyped up and you know like you got beers or whatever the 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 energy i don't think there's anything else like this in video gaming where like maybe some esports stuff but even that feels different because like the uh the speedrunner will like know the exact place to stand to jab and kill the boss without taking any damage and able to do it in like you know six seconds or whatever and every time he, when they kill the boss the crowd is just like yeah like fuck <laughs> it you know like screaming way more at the success of the individual playing the game way more than like the musicians you know the songs end and it's like whatever but it's when the speedrunner does some or they'll do some trick where they like glitch through a, a a wall and everyone loses their shit cheering for the guy glitching through a wall like throwing fists in the air and just cheering for this guy just like hunkered down on stage uh speed running the legend of zelda it's such a like weird and and fun and uh interesting experience and and also legend of zelda you realize speed running you can just run past almost every bad guy in zelda in those early games <laughs> you just mostly speed running zelda at least from what i can tell is just avoiding everything killing the bare minimum and just going exactly the route to dodge everything which was funny but if you ever get a chance i think they're from uh, somewhere they're like in from athens georgia i think maybe atlanta um and they tour uh pretty frequently so if you ever get a chance to go see them i highly recommend it any of the shows even if it's a game you've never played before like i'd never played the batman game or whatever it was still awesome so check them out and they have uh, i have the vinyl of their legend of zelda covers and it's awesome we we play it from time to time so check them out this looks absolutely gorgeous i think like i i I miss this stuff. I used to uh, live in Seattle and I got to go to the PAX uh, conference. Nice. The concerts were super fun because yeah. it was all this kind of stuff. So I, I, and I loved it when I saw the live play of, of journey. So like, I, I think this yeah. is like, this just sounds like that, but like, the volume knob's been turned up and it's like the adrenaline's been turned up. <laughs> oh yeah. It's, I mean, it's a, it's a metal show with video games on stage. It's awesome. Yeah, that's great. So I guess that's everything for this episode. Um, uh, as we wrap up, first we want to throw a shout out to all of our patrons. Uh, we are supported by Patreon. If you enjoy the show and want to engage with us a little bit more, all subscribers starting at $1 get access to our Discord um, where we talk about upcoming episodes, plan the show to a degree, and um, just we've got all sorts of channel. The Forever Bird Week channel still going. If you want to come in and talk about birds, uh, we've got it there. Um, and if you subscribe at the five dollar uh, level, Reagan will send you stickers, and he'll kiss every single one of them. Uh, don't worry, he does not have COVID. Um, so you get covid free stickers sent directly from reagan uh, and they all have little lipstick kisses on them um <laughs> if you like the show and and um are not at you know able to support on patreon totally understand that's cool uh we'd love it if you went to itunes and left a review that also helps us out um, we're slowly marching uh up the up the uh the review count and we really appreciate anyone taking the time to um, give us their feedback um, you can find us on Twitter at underscore short game. Uh, you can find us on our website at theshortgame.net. We have all of our episodes, all of our show notes, and you can contact us through that. You can find me on Twitter at NateSTL. 
Laura, where can people find you? On Twitter at Laura J. Nash. And I'm on Twitter and, at Shane. Oh, I didn't ask you, Shane. And Shane, where can people find you? I already said. <laughs> Reagan, clean it up. <laughs> um, and that's it for this week. Uh, this week's episode of The Short Game.